Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Ran, and this is The Groom, and we just saw Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark in theaters. We watched a new movie. This Be is proud. A, this, this is a big step for us. This, this is like, a big step. It's like the third time we've done this. A new movie that we didn't get a screener for, like we actually had to leave the house, so. And go to movie tavern. Yep. Oh, all right, tell them about the movie. So, a, a brief synopsis with no spoilers here. We follow Stella, Augie, and Chuck, three friends who are trying to get back on a bully that I guess terrorizes them not only on Halloween, but pretty much every day of their life, with Chuck fishing his own poo out of the toilet so he can then throw it at him, which spurns, you know, this horrible car accident with the bully, Tommy. Because I mean, not really an accident. You he throw, backs over a fence. Yeah, so they get chased. They end up in a drive-in where they're watching Night of the Living Dead. And they meet Ramon, who is sitting in his car alone watching a movie. They hide there from the bully. Then they're like, oh, let's go to a haunted house, which, of course, belongs to Sarah Bellows, who is this weird kind of myth, kind of legend, that she wrote all these stories, would tell them to kids through a wall in her house, was never allowed outside. She disappeared after her death when she hung herself with her own hair, which could happen because hair is pretty strong. I asked that in the movie theater. Yes. So, of course, what do you do when you break into a haunted house and find a haunted book? Is you take it because you're a dumb teenager and then start to read the stories. And as the trailer has showed us, the stories start to become, a, you know, a living thing and start whatever. Spoiler free. That's what the, the trailer showed, at least. I did watch the trailer for this. The uh, the bully... At one point in time, the bully... Uh, <laughs> the one kid said that the bully had farted in his chocolate milk carton and then, make, and then made him drink it. That's disgusting. That was one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Yeah. So, alright. You get cholera, I'm sure. <laughs> that's how you get pink eye. That's no, how that's, you get pink eye. That's if you get farted in the eye. Anyways, part of somebody's pillow. totally off topic. Um, so, what did you like about the movie? I liked yeah. the creature design. I liked um, the scarecrow scene. That was disgusting. That was disgusting. Like, it made awesome. me feel very itchy. Um, I like that the book had really nice handwriting. That was beautiful handwriting. That's Catholic school handwriting. Yeah. Um, I really like Del Toro, but I just, I don't know. It was PG-13. We cannot glaze over that. I think it would be a lot different if this were an R-rated movie. And you made a really good point in the car that this movie, like, everyone that was a fan of the book growing up or in their teenage years would be, like, in their 30s now. So why is it not R-rated? Why is it PG-13? I have this sneaky suspicion that they're going to re-release the books and they're trying to get this out to a new audience. Which, why would you do that? I just want the books re-released with the original illustration because those are scary. <laughs> yeah, they were. Oh, my God. Um. All right, so something I like about this movie. Oh, let's, let's dig for this. I mean, it's... <sighs> These... The stories themselves, mm -hmm. the the uh, story themselves were from the books, the big toe, the red spot, the haunted house. These were all stories from the books. I liked that. I liked the fact that there was stuff that I could pick out that I remembered from the books. I haven't read I haven't read those books since I was a kid. I have them. And yeah, I know probably somewhere. No, it's in the bedroom. Um. I like the fact that I could connect with that, that, that they kept that they kept the actual story parts kind of very close to the books, but man, do I have a lot of questions. Well, you were saying, too, you were disappointed because you were somehow under the impression this was an anthology movie? I wanted this to be like the different actors for different stories. That's what I wanted so bad, and or I couldn't think like of what it was like in going. Trick or Treat, how it was... A different story but they all like played in together and they were all yes. going on at the same time yes. at some points that would I would have cool. been okay with that 
Let's go into things we didn't like, because there was one thing we both hated. The stupid ass subplot. That well, that's one of the things. Oh, I, hated I didn't that need so bad. a story about, you know. When my mom left, I was a teenage girl. So I really don't feel like I needed that in my horror movie. Not to be insensitive or anything, but I don't think that for me at least it built anything for the story it had me feel more sympathetic for the characters. I was just like, "Oh, yeah, I know that sucks. Personally, I know that sucks." Like parents leave. Thanks, dad. It happens. Um it's I th that was so unnecessary. It made it feel like they were trying to draw a like a parallel between the fact that her mom left her when she was a kid, and that's why she likes to sit in a room and tell and write down these, you know, because she's a she's an author. Um, she likes to write stories herself. Stella, yeah. yeah. Like you know, I think they were trying to draw a par parallel between her mom leaving, and that's why she's like that. And the whole like she takes she's taking care of her dad because her dad can't take care of himself. I I, hate I never that. got the. She made him. She made him dinner. Had to cover him up. Have to cover him up when he passed out. That's it's just. Kind of, that's contributing to your household. If your dad falls asleep, cover him up with a blanket. It's just it's the nice thing to do. It's just, I didn't need that subplot. I feel as if if there was going to be a subplot in this, it should have been connected to one of the stories, or connected to un, to like you know the main character, the the Sarah the Sarah Bellows character. Like, I feel like if you're going to put a subplot in there like that, like, you know, like, Sarah Bellow's, like, great aunt was her mom or some shit like that. Like, they like no. connected some <laughs> some way like that. They just, it's like they were like, oh, this is PG-13. Let's put something in for the stupid kids who are going to watch this. I mean, yeah, So they have somebody to root for. exactly why they did it. Yeah, I hate that so much. I think that this, this movie could have been done so much better as an R-rated anthology movie. And you could have really turned up the practical effects a lot. And we've seen... Like, um, use them better. Like, Del Toro movies, really oh. decent practical effects. And even CGI working Pan's really Labyrinth. well. The CGI in Pan's Labyrinth was amazing. And I did not like the CGI in this movie whatsoever, particularly from one of the stories at the end. I can't even remember the name of the story... But it was a guy in a bunch of pieces that kind of reassembled itself like the shittiest Terminator ever. It looked like a mix between like Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin and the Terminator. That's just like, yeah. boop, 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 boop. like no, I'm no, just no. It just it. Oh. I just I sat there disappointed the whole time, like like just sitting there thinking like this could have been done better and with less jump scares. What yeah, the they're going. <laughs> they're going. They're going for cheap jump scares. Like the whole time, like the uh, like the bed, the bedroom scene, where I'm just like, well, I better watch. It's gonna be right here because the music stops, and he starts looking around, and it's like, yeah, here comes a jump scare. Mm -hmm. Here comes an obvious jump scare. Yeah. <sighs> I. Uh, Dumb. I, don't know. I mean, I guess if I was a teenager and I hadn't seen a lot of horror movies, perhaps I'd be a little more into it. Or if I didn't have such strong nostalgia for the stories itself, I would be far less critical. I think, but I love those stories so much. I think that's going to be a big thing for, for people in their 30s. We're going to be like, yeah, the books are so much better. They are, though. Ooh. That one story, I think it's from the first volume, where the girl goes to the cemetery in the middle of the night, and she's dared to put the knife into the grave. <sighs> And doesn't realize it goes through her skirt, and they find her the next morning just dead. Like that shit haunted me. Because she thought that something was that something her, was pulling grab... her and holding her there, uh -huh. and she didn't die from a zombie or a ghost. She died literally from being scared, and that's probably like the worst <laughs> possible. I remember that. Yeah, one that vividly. that messed me up. Um. All right. So ratings. Go ahead, because you're going to be a lot nicer than me. Um, mm, I'll give it, like, I don't know, a 2 out of 5, because I do understand that it was PG-13. I did like the scarecrow part. 
There were only two on-screen kills in this entire movie, which I also will attribute to it being PG-13. I mean, I appreciate that they tried. I didn't quite enjoy all the acting in it. It wasn't great. I'm just, I'm really hard on, like, not adult actors. It's because good. they can just come off really annoying and bratty. It's also because of it. It had such good child acting in and it. And Stranger Things. And Stranger Things. Had, it had, We know that, that there are child actors out there that are that are a lot better. And it makes us hypercritical of ones that do a poor job. Like her. Uh. Alright, so. And I feel like they should have used more practical effects. I know, I know that they did use a lot with the creature design and everything, but that one creature was essentially like all CGI, did not look good. There were just aspects of the story that had a lot of holes in it that I was kind of like, but wait, if this didn't happen, then why did they still die or disappear or whatever? Why did that thing keep chasing them? Yeah. Yeah. I've got questions. And also, it kind of left it open for some other stuff at the end. And the oh. ending, for like, I know Del Toro doesn't have like a whole huge hand in this. He he didn't direct it. He wrote it and produced, produced it. it. But like every movie he's ever done has damaged me emotionally in some way. Like sobbed like a bitch at the end of Pan's Labyrinth. Like damaging that so good sad. and that's what i was kind of expecting with the end of the movie oh. and it didn't do that for me and i was kind of like all right i'm giving this a one out of five stars i wanted to give it a zero potentially negative stars this was a terrible movie it's it's not that the movie was bad per se it's the fact that the movie could have been done significantly better with Less CGI, more practical effects, Antho anthology type of movie, R-rated, don't pander to kids. This is not a children's movie. Those books are, although we read them as young adults, they're not for kids. They're for teenagers. An R-rated movie is good for 15, 16, 17. I've been watching R-rated movies since I was like 14. Not me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, my mom was kind of like at work all the time so it for me the reason why it gets one out of five is not because it was necessarily that bad of a movie was that it could have been done significantly better i thought it was written poorly i thought guillermo del toro is this is the worst movie i've ever seen that he had his hands in well damn. this is it was it was written lazy for first of all you took a treasured book with great stories made them less scary, made them confusing, put a bunch of plot holes in there, and then lined some stupid teen r romantic Twilight-like freaking subplot in there that, that does absolutely nothing to contribute to the overall aspect of this movie. I grant you no points, Guillermo del Toro, and may God have mercy on your soul. Henry. Because, yeah, exactly, thank you, Mia. So it's just, I just think this was done so badly with the potential to make this so much better. And the fact that you literally just kicked my childhood straight in the nuts. Because this was, had a, this had a chance to be so much better and it wasn't. And it just, it was the most disappointing thing I've watched in a very long time. I, that's why I staved off my expectations for this movie because when it was PG-13 I was like oh my god they're gonna do this bad and I was right. Maybe I didn't think it was that bad because I typically love watch books. a lot of really bad movies. I think you because, because you love the book so much I think you just want to like this movie more than you really did. I mean I don't <laughs> necessarily think I would ever watch it again. And that's the other thing I wanted the that was one of the best. The Girl in the Graveyard. The Girl in the Graveyard is one of the best stories from that book. Yeah. How was that not in there? Write that into there. That's the best one. That's the one that like screwed with you the most as a kid. Hell yeah. That's the one so, I remembered. So I just... Uh, Alright, I'm done. Rant over. So yeah. Have you seen this movie? What are your thoughts? What's your favorite story from the books? Let us know in the comments down below. 
If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. Uh, hit the like button if you did like the video, or you could hit the like button if that story also messed with your brain for many, many years. Hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. My solo as well as reviews with the groom are available in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators for some super, super duper good content as well. And shout out to uh, the horror show for our awesome t-shirts we got from their from their from their merch site i love this i got so many compliments on my shirt today <laughs> so like the video if you like tripod cats yes beautiful. if you like cats with three legs we got you covered my beautiful tripod cat all right <sighs> so scary stories to tell in the dark <sighs> that movie was a scary story all right see you later guys bye bye, bye.